But one thing that my outplacement consultant said is it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, finding a job. Mm. So it's important to have your support crew around you. So whether that's, I, for me, other people who were impacted in the same layoffs that I was, we just kept in touch constantly. Um, it really helps so you're not isolated in the job search. You're, you know, talking to your peers and you can also bounce things off each other. Hello and welcome to the PyBytes podcast, where we talk about Python, career, and mindset. We're your hosts. I'm Julian Sequeira. And I am Bob Beldebos. If you're looking to improve your Python, your career, and learn the mindset for success, this is the podcast for you. Let's get started. Welcome back to the PyBytes podcast. This is Julian. I am here without Bob this week. He's currently off on holiday. So I am actually hosting an interview with a very, very special guest. Uh, Today, I'm interviewing Emily Wilcock. Emily is a career recruiter. She's been a recruiter for about 15 years now in the talent acquisition space and uh, a good friend of mine and is also now supporting us at PyBytes with everything recruiting and CV and LinkedIn and all that sort of space. And uh, today, Emily and I have this incredible discussion where Emily shares seven tips for people who've unfortunately gone through being made redundant. So this episode is dedicated for peop- to people who have gone through redundancy. There's been a lot that have happened in the tech layoffs recently at the time of this recording. And we wanted to put something out there for anyone who's listening that might be in that situation or anyone who knows someone in that situation. So if you're listening to this and you've been fortunate enough to uh, keep your job and everything stable for you, but you know people who have gone through this pain, please make sure you forward this episode to them because there are lots of valuable tips that Emily covers off uh, for what people can do, almost like a checklist of what to do if this happens to you. So please keep this in mind. And also remember a lot of these tips are appropriate for people, even if you haven't gone through uh, being made redundant or being laid off um, recently or in the future. So uh, without further ado, uh, here is my interview with Emily Wilcock. Uh, Enjoy and uh, make sure to pass it on if this is, again, something that you know someone else could get benefit from. Enjoy the interview. Okay, welcome back. This is Julian. I'm here with a very special guest, Emily Wilcock. Em, welcome to the podcast. How's it going? Good. Thank you for having me. So excited to be here today, Jules. Awesome. Um, yeah, me too. I'm very excited that you're here. We have a lot to talk about. And I know, um, as per the intro that I just recorded, maybe I'll record that after this. We'll <laughs> see. Um, <laughs> we are talking about a very, very special topic to uh, at the moment, but something that's meaningful to us both. And that is to uh, how people can, you know, handle being made redundant or being laid off, which is very topical right now with everything happening in the industry. And um, you've got some great tips for everyone. Um, But in typical PyBytes fashion, uh, we're going to cover off some wins. But before we go into those wins, do you want to just introduce yourself? You know, who are you? What are you about? What's happening? Absolutely. Um, Well, thanks for having me today, Jules. Really excited to be here. My name's Emily Wilcock. Um, I'm originally from the UK, West London, moved to Australia, uh, Sydney in 2007. I've got about 15 years experience in talent acquisition, including at Amazon Web Services, where I met Jules, um, best job of all. (laughs) I unfortunately was impacted by layoffs in that position. Um, So a lot of the tips that I'm going to be sharing today are based on my own personal experience and those of my other peers who were also impacted. Um, I'm now in a contract position with the Reserve Bank of Australia in in Sydney uh, doing some recruitment for them and I'm also freelancing with PyBytes um, and helping coaching some of the the PyBytes developers on their CVs and recruitment, all things job searching. Love it. So they're there may be some bias in this episode because you were <laughs> you're working closely with us these days. Um, it's awesome. And we love having you on the team, Em. So again, thank you for for being part of the PyBytes team as well. It's been so uh, much fun. I love it. Good. That's right, everyone. You heard it from Em. She's not under duress. Blink twice if you need help. Um, <laughs> So, so we're, we're happy to have you here. And um, yeah, it's again, that experience of you going through redundancy is um, 
you know, well, one, you've bounced back, which is amazing, of course. Uh, but yeah, th- I really appreciate you being here to share that. Uh, what, what can be a really intimate and um, meaningful situation to people? It can be very personal. It can be very touchy in some points as well. Uh, I appreciate you agreeing to share some of your story and tips uh, for getting through it with our um, with our group today, with the audience, with our, our people. So um all right, we'll kick it off. Oh, by the way, I won't hold it against you that you're from the UK because you're <laughs> to Sydney. So uh, I, I'm Thanks, okay with that. Jules. That's all right. That, I that's also stand- married an Australian, so yeah, I'm, I'm a citizen now. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's a that's a stab at, at some of our um, UK listeners who are, <laughs> you know who you are. Hello, uh, UK listeners. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so wins. Let's kick it off. Um, I did. This is one of the few things we actually prepared in advance. Em, what's your win you want to share with the audience? Well, my win this week, Jules, is actually being on the Pie Bites podcast. I've never been on a podcast before. I've been super <laughs> excited and a little bit nervous about it. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to count that as my win for the week. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, that, that's humbling. But it's cool. <laughs> this is your first time on a podcast. We're going to make it very difficult. So you never want to do it again. Um, <laughs> Which is good. First of many, uh, I hope. <laughs> first of many. And we'll have to have you back because some of these topics we're going to dive into in a sec are definitely, uh, we're going to hit them at a higher level, but there's definitely more that we can have you back on the podcast for later. So that's cool. Um, all right. So my win really quick, uh, I won't definitely won't go into detail on this, but yeah, I was promoted at work. Everyone who's listening knows I still work at AWS. So I was promoted this week, which is awesome. Feels good. Thank you. And um, the other win I wanted to share with everyone from a PyBytes perspective is uh, we actually started working on something new, something completely different to Python-based coaching. Uh, I'm working on that with, uh, I'll give you a hint, uh, one of our previous guests on this podcast. Uh, so it's not it's not a Bob and me thing. It's uh, we're bringing in someone else to build a whole new program to support a whole different subset of the population. And it's uh, it's very exciting. Been fleshing that out over the past few weeks. And um yeah, you'll hear more about that on future episodes. So that's another win I wanted to share. Um, okay, so we'll dive in. Em, you can take it from here. We're going to talk about, well, actually, you tell everyone. I've done enough talking. What are we doing? So uh, I just thought I'm sharing a few tips around what really helped me and what worked for me um, during the during layoffs. And hopefully some of these tips can be useful for some other people. Obviously, I know we're all in very different circumstances, so do bear that in mind. But hopefully there's something here that can can help everybody. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, I like that that little disclaimer. Uh, <laughs> we know all of your situations are different. And if any of you have been affected by redundancy, we know some of these things may not come that easy for you. Uh, but just take it with a grain of salt. These are great steps. And, um, you know, we'll get to that when it, when when we get to it. So, all right, I'm taking it away. Number one, what's what's first on the list? So first on the list is, I guess, taking some time to absorb it, taking a bit, a little bit of a break and some time out to reset. And it can be a bit counterintuitive to do that because, you know, you're like, I've got to get into it. I've got to start the job search. But I think it's important mindset wise to make sure that you've kind of assimilated the information, that you've processed it, um, because oftentimes I've seen, you know, people can have some anger, things like that. So you want to kind of get through that stage, get through the kind of bargaining, questioning, why me, to kind of some degree of acceptance. The other mm. thing is, if you can take a bit of a break, it is good to do so. You you may not be able to, like I couldn't, for example, my husband was working, so I couldn't really go away. Um, but the once you start the job search, what you'll find and what I found is that the momentum keeps going. You've got like calls and meetings every day. So it's like, then you can't take a break because you're losing that momentum. So if you can take a couple of days when it first happens, just to get a bit of space from it, so then you can come back with the right headspace to start the job search, then that's awesome. If not, you know, spend some time doing some things where you live, etc. But yeah, taking a, just a tiny bit of time out is tip one. Yeah, that's perfect. I, I like that one because you're right. The the instinct as as people who have mortgages and families to yes. support is like, I got to get back into it. And it it's actually counterintuitive because uh, even though that may be the pressure on you, it's really important to mourn the loss. And I like yes. that term. 
um, a friend of mine, Chantel, shared that with me. Uh, you have to mourn the loss. You have to come. Yeah. There's that acceptance that you've you've lost your job, that it's been taken away, and that now you're in this period of uncertainty, and you have to get into that headspace of being able to to navigate that. So, uh, I love that. That's a great tip. It's a great place to start as well. And then you come back. You know, you might decompress and realize, you know what? Yeah. Life is okay. We're going to be fine. Let's get into it. You know. So absolutely. And a lot of people decide they want to do something different. So try mm. and take some positives away from this. You know, it's an opportunity to think about where the positives are in the situation as well. Yeah. And a nice way to realign with your values as well. Yes. That's a that's a whole nother podcast episode. <laughs> um, all right. So number two, what's uh, what's next on the list? So it's all sort of aligned to number one, but making the most of the time that you've got while you're doing the job search. Because as adults, it's very rare for us to have time off where we're not working for a period of time, more than a week or so, it really is. So mm. I definitely, and again, this is you know a situational thing, but I definitely wanted to look back and be like, I'm, I made the most of that time. I didn't waste that time. So, you know, as well as, you know, spending time on your job search, which we'll get to in the remaining points, but, you know, making sure that you are committing time to wellness. Uh, mm. Advice I got was that you should, you know, you should study one thing that will help you professionally, but then something personal that you've always wanted to study. So, you know, if it's tech certification on the professional side, but on the personal side, it might be, you know, DIY or wine tasting or French or surfing yeah. or, you know, whatever it may be, just something to kind of, um, you know, that, that excites you that you want to study and, you know, make sure that you get up to date with all your health stuff. I, I definitely did all of that, like dentists, all the medical checks, everything. Um, and any projects that you've been looking to focus on outside of work. So whether that's financial, like making sure you've got all your like finances in order, home renovations, um, spending time with the family, anything like that. Um, while you're doing the job search, the advice that I got from outplacement was that you should be spending, say, potentially like four hours a day on the job search, which mm -hmm. is still a decent chunk of time, but it does give you time to kind of do some other things as well. That's cool. I, it, that's not something I, I even considered for this because uh, as you were talking, my mind's just going a million miles an hour. I'm thinking guitar. Yes. <laughs> With the guitar behind me. But um, it's it's almost like de what's the word decoding yourself from the work you were in yes where you might have been burnt out overworked putting in way yeah. too many hours uh, it's a nice way of building new habits I like that and then when you do it inevitably land another job you're like okay but I am carving out half an hour for guitar every day I am spending I'm there to, with my kids every evening you know reading a book so I'm going to continue that and protect it so that's really cool I like this um, you're so right like building those habits because don't they say it takes three weeks to form a habit so yeah by that point you're in the habit of doing whatever it is so yeah I agree yeah then you're more willing to have boundaries so no that's cool though that's a great tip I really like that and that um, hour thing four hours on the job search a day is a good finite number um, okay so next uh, what did you have on the list after that one having your support group around you um, so one thing that you often will get as part of a layoff is you'll get access to an outplacement consultant. In a lot of countries, it's a legal requirement. I found my outplace consultant to be absolutely phenomenal, like outstanding. So I definitely leveraged that resource. What, um, what do they do? What's an outplacement so they, they there's lots of different companies that offer it. The big one, one of the big global ones is LHH. Um, that was the one that the that's one of the biggest ones in Australia. And basically you get a dedicated consultant who meets up with you on like a fortnightly basis to give you tips on your job search. They'll look at your CV. They'll look at your LinkedIn. You'll talk to them personally about, you know, how how your interviews are going, what challenges you're having, any any reservations you've got, and they'll give you advice. And it, so it's sort of like, actually, I was going to say in the making the most of the time, you know, one thing some, you could do is do counseling, get your mental health, you know, really good. But they also mm. are like a counselor for the job search and it's paid for by your old employer. Um, yeah, in a Ooh. lot of countries, including Australia, it's a legal requirement. You, 
to have one um, when when these things happen. So yeah, definitely make the most of that resource. I found my outplacement consultant to be exceptional. So nice. um, that's that's one part of your support group. But one thing that my outplacement consultant said is it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint finding a job. Mm. So it's important to have your support crew around you. So whether that's, I for me, other people who were impacted in the same layoffs that I was, we just kept in touch constantly. Um, it really helps. So you're not isolated in the job search. You're, you know, talking to your peers and you can also mm bounce things off each other like oh how does this email sound would you follow up here it's like nice. you've got like a team helping you what is what do you think about this on my cv like you know you can have a whinge if an interview's gone really badly or if something <laughs> funny happens that kind of thing um and obviously friends family etc but yeah it's important to have those people around you because if you're trying to do it all on your own mm. i think it would be so hard and i definitely wouldn't have had the fun that I had this summer. It helps you see the funny side of certain situations as well when you're telling other people. So mm. I think that support group, that's like out of all of these tips for me, that was like the number one thing that helped me. That's awesome. I like that. It's, it's a, it can be a really lonely experience yeah. going through the job hunt, you know, whether you've been laid off or not. Uh, so having people to talk to about it. So um, it can be really uplifting because, um, you know, if you go for a job and you don't get it or the whatever happens, having those people going, nah, man, it's fine. There's plenty more jobs out there. Yeah. It's fine. Keep it up. Let's go have 10 beers. <laughs> yes. Literally. Yeah. Like I, I had an interview and it lasted like seven minutes. And then, you know, I was wow. a bit bummed out, as you'd imagine, um, you know, like mm -hmm. really prepared for it and everything. And then, you know, when you start chatting to your friends and family, you can kind of see the funny side. It takes you, like you said, it takes you out of yourself. Yeah, it really yep. helps. That's a great tip. Um, yeah. And it, I think everyone listening to this and everyone who's going through it, you'll have an idea who your support group is already, right? They might yes. even be some of the, um, some of your teammates that. That's you might have who helped behind, me. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So whether they were laid off as well or whether they weren't, you know, you might have just people you can trust essentially to open up and share with. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and I made new friends through it as well like the mm. other people who were impacted we really like banded together as a bit of a group because I mean I suppose that's the thing with mass layoffs there was a lot of us so mm. it's yeah we kind of like and I definitely built some of them are now my best friends but before oh. we were we were mates but it yeah. definitely like speaking to them every day through this whole process is yeah it's definitely deep the friendship yeah that's cool I like that nice silver lining that's yeah, cool. exactly. That's what I think. Yeah. All right. Next one. What's up next? What do you got? So your CV working on that. So that is your brand when you go out to the market. Um, mm -hmm. As you can imagine, a lot of employers are getting a lot of CVs. So you want to make sure that yours is as good as it can possibly be. I mean, you can even personalize it for individual applications that you're doing. Um, but I also, once again, would get feedback from other people because you can be a bit too close to your own CV and your right. own and your own experience. So I've definitely, yeah, gotten feedback from other people, put it in a Google Doc, got, you know, friends, family, mentors, professional peers and people I respect to edit it, have a look, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. and, and refreshing it you know as as time goes by you can kind of hone it based on what people are asking you and based on what you know employers are wanting to see but yeah really work on that would be my absolute next next step and if you're getting to a point where your cv isn't getting the bites or getting the responses then you can kind of go back to the drawing board and change things up a bit and this one's the hardest one i reckon out of all the tips I agree. And there's so much you could say about it as well. Yeah. Like there's a lot that you can do with it. Yeah. It's so daunting. It's such a, such a difficult experience. I think one of the biggest struggles people have is uh, talking about themselves and in, in paper form, right. It's hard enough to do it in a conversation and not sound <laughs> egotistical, but then yeah, doing it on a piece of paper, trying to keep it to two pages, trying to you know go through those uh, guidelines that come around building your own CV and then having to talk about yourself and your achievements and what's relevant. And so, yeah, that tip on having other people uh, look through it, super valuable. So, and 
that's what you do in that is what I do (laughs) it is what I do and there are some really basic things that you can do like Mm. you know make sure that in your current role you've got achievements listed that is very impact focused rather than you know just listing out your job responsibilities I see a lot where people have used very job specific terminology and acronyms don't do that make sure that you're that what you're describing makes sense to a lay person because often it will be a lay person who's reading it um Mm -hmm. yeah make sure that the formatting um i immediately the first thing i did was get a new template out so that my cv looked quite current i quite like Mm. that um yeah there's there's heaps of things that you can do that will make your cv look good and don't be afraid to use chat gpt as well oh yeah um that's really good for for some of those bullet points take it with a pinch of salt some of them it can be a bit too wordy but it yep. gives you like a bit of a framework. Yeah, and then you can work with it and yeah. cut it down and do whatever you need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that that's worthy of another episode, I think, to even go through all those um, tips, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's so uh, for those of you listening, I mean, even people who don't need to go and search for a job at the moment. Yes. Uh, yeah, getting keeping your CV up to date is super important. So definitely get on top of that, especially as things are changing in your job while it's still fresh in your mind. You're not thinking two yes. years later, what do I do again in that role? So um, yeah, nice. All right. Uh, I think and we that got... aligns to that tip oh, yeah. that you give always, Jules, the brag file. Like Oh, the brag That sheet. was something, <laughs> yeah. Like that's something that I've taken away from working with Jules is yeah. um, he suggests having a brag sheet. So like a literally a list of, achievements that you're doing it's a working document in your job um Mm. and then you can use that to put to keep to keep your cv current as well yeah and you you link it to the things you achieved the impact on the customer and all that stuff uh similar to you know how bob and i everyone listening bob and i are always talking about our wins file that we update every monday and and you know share a similar sort of thing but do that for your corporate experiences your work experiences and um then when it comes time to update your CV, you've got all the data in one place. So and we're, giving, we're giving away all the secrets <laughs> in and put ourselves out of work soon. Um, <laughs> no, that's cool. All right. So the next one's kind of related. We're talking LinkedIn, right? So what's on that? Yes. One? So LinkedIn, um, and I know some people really don't like to do it, but I do recommend doing a LinkedIn post announcing that you've whether, whether you announce that you've been laid off or that you're looking for a new role, however you word it, but to announce that you're in the market. And the reason for that is that typically people might who don't want to do it might just reach out to the people they want to reach out to. And that's a good idea too. But the LinkedIn post gets your third, your fourth connections. And typically they're the ones that are going to find you a job because your immediate connections, you already know if they had a role, they would have already given it to you. You're in touch with them. They're talking to you. Um, I know I got my job from a somebody that I worked with in an agency over 10 years ago when I did my LinkedIn post saying, look, my position was impacted. Thank you. I had an amazing time. I'm open to work. I'm looking for this. And a photo, he messaged me like, hey, um, how are you? Hope Paul's well. Paul's my husband. Um, I've got a role that could work out for you. And that's where I am. I hadn't spoken to him in over 10 years. Likewise, another colleague that I hadn't spoken to in over 10 years messaged me off my post. It wasn't the role wasn't for me, but I passed it over to a good friend of mine. um, And now he works there. So those posts, those are people probably that I wouldn't have thought to reach out to because they were quite far removed, but you don't know who your post is getting seen by. So Mm. you will, you, if you do a post, you will get hit up for things that are absolutely not of interest, not relevant in any way, shape or form. That's okay. That's part of it. You need to just, you know, thank you so much for thinking of me. I'm pursuing X at this time, but I'd love to stay Mm. connected. Um, That's totally fine. But it's, it's just such a good way of getting the news out there in a really quick way and potentially reaching an audience of people that you wouldn't even know has opportunities for you. So yeah, big tip is to do the LinkedIn post. But before you do, make sure your LinkedIn is up to date. So make sure you've got, you're using, you know, your profile's fully optimized, that you're using the relevant words that will come up in search engines that Mm. are going to, um, that are for the jobs that you're looking for, that you've got all your sections up to date, that you've got your qualifications, your certifications on there, that you've got your achievements on there. So that when people do look at your LinkedIn profile, it's, it's relevant. 
Um, yep. Another thing that I didn't do as much, but is good to do is to keep yourself current on LinkedIn. So be a bit of a thought leader, post content, that sort of thing while you're in this time. That's definitely something I could have been better at, but <laughs> it's something that um, is recommended. That's so amazing tips. I hope everyone's like pausing, writing these down as, uh, <laughs> as I'm <laughs> spitting them out. Uh, yeah, that's, that's super valuable. I was going to say, yeah, the keeping your LinkedIn profile up to date is very similar to keeping your cv up yes <laughs> and uh so yeah the do it in that order the profile first because then as you make that post yes. people will come check you out you know yes um and i and i like i know it's it might seem stressful or weird to put a post like that out even uh vulnerable to put a post yeah. like that out but the reality is it's just you know the squeaky wheel gets the grease you've you've got yes. to ask if you don't ask then people won't know to reach out to offer you things and they might just think oh yeah they're fine m's fine so i'm not gonna rock the boat but seeing a post like that might trigger someone to like oh actually i had a chat with someone the other day who was looking for someone that m yes. would be a shoe in for you know so um that's that's why we should do it we should get it out there be vulnerable and um let everyone know that we we need their their connections and support you know so absolutely and the other thing on linkedin is um you know when people do message you and they'll be like hey i'm so sorry to hear how can i help one thing mm -hmm. you can say is you know if you enjoyed working with me and you'd like to write me a recommendation mm -hmm. then you know that would be lovely and um, often I've, you know, I got quite a few recommendations from that, from colleagues. It's something that recruiters do look at and it does look good on your profile. And it also yeah. is a way of staying connected to those people that have reached out and offered you help. So yeah, asking for those recommendations can be good as well, or asking them to comment on your post, that kind of thing yeah. to comment Keep for better reach, up. that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 That's a good tip. Now that's, uh, that's a great tip for many of us who haven't who aren't in that situation and how we can help uh, yes. when it feels like you can't because you may not have a job opportunity but you can certainly share out posts and like things and comment and uh, make a recommendations and that doesn't take much time so uh, great tip there as well um, and it does help it makes you feel good as well when someone writes you yeah. a recommendation it's like oh i did make a difference there and you know it can be a tough time so it you know those things really matter to people who have been impacted yeah, and if and if you can't say anything nice, you just lie. No, I'm kidding. Don't. <laughs> <do that>. um, <laughs> um, all right. So that leads into the next tip that you had, which is about networking. So that's one of my favorite tips um, and things I love to talk about on the podcast. So go for it. What's on your mind with that? So and that one big thing I think is to always be networking. So even if you're not haven't been impacted by layoffs, that you know they're not on the horizon. I definitely don't think don't think I did this well enough, but when I was working, um, but I definitely making up for lost time is to make sure that you are always networking. So if you have been laid off, the recommendation from my outplacement um, professional was to do five outreach a day over and above applying for jobs. Um, or sometimes if you've applied for a job, you can reach out to the job poster. I always yep. recommend doing that. Um, and I count that towards my five. But yeah, five outreach messages per day. 100% wow. recommend doing that. And she was like, you know, it's manageable. And it really is manageable. Like five is not a huge number. Um, if you've, you know, then if you're inundated with interviews, you can kind of scale it back a bit and then, you know, rebuild it back up. But yeah, five a day is, is a manageable number. And just, you know, reaching out to people through your network, explaining, you know, reminding them who you are, how, how you met them or how you know them. If, if it's someone you met a long time ago, what your situation is, what you're looking for and what you're asking for from them. So, you know, mm. if you hear of anything that comes up or, you know, if you could introduce me to so-and-so or, um, you know, I'd love to have a coffee to learn more about your business or whatever it may be, and then attach your resume. And, you know, through that, I had meetings with heads of recruitment all over the place. And, you know, I'm still in touch with a lot of those people. It's, yeah, it's definitely a good, it can feel a bit awkward at first, but mm. if you kind of treat it like, okay, I've done my five and then I'm going to the beach or I've done my five yeah. and then I'm going to go and have a beer or whatever, then, <laughs> you know, you, you kind of get into the rhythm of doing them. But yeah, definitely recommend that. That's cool. That, that's great advice. And a, again, for anyone, even if you're not you know, about to be made redundant or something. It's a great habit to get into of just networking in general. Um, you never know when a connection might 
lead to a you know greater job opportunity or or something else right so um yeah those and are even like then if you're doing like one or two a week you know if you're mm. working and you're not you know you're not going to do five a day i guess if you're in full-time employment probably yeah um but you know you might target yourself on like a coffee a week or something yep. but yeah exactly. it's good to set yourself like a little target so that you're accountable yeah and just one one tip from me on that is that I know it can seem kind of daunting to yes. reach out to people, especially people that you might not have worked with for a couple of years. Mm. But I got to tell you, it's, I feel like it's human nature. I'm not a psychology expert, so don't, don't quote me on this people. Don't, don't judge me. <laughs> but I feel like as people, we like to be thought of. Yes. You know, we like it when people come to us and say, Hey, you know, I was just thinking about you. You want to grab a coffee just to catch up? It's been like five years. Why not? You know, so it, it's nice to be thought about and it's, it's nice to receive an invitation to just chat for 15 minutes or half an hour. And people will surprise you by taking time that you didn't expect them to make yes. because they're like, you know what? I could use a break. Well, that's really nice. I, I do miss, miss working with so-and-so, you know, it or whatever your relationship is with them. But uh, yeah, give people more credit um, than assuming the worst, because uh, I think I like to receive those messages. Please message me for a coffee please um i i, like I do too <laughs> stuff like that so there you go um okay and last one because these have been so informative um and we're going to limit it to this last one well that's that's all you had on the list anyway that's but... all i had <laughs> so interview oh, preparation it. and practice the big, the big one yeah when you do have interviews make sure that you're set up for success um i liked doing like a five minute meditation before my interviews mm. just so that I'm in the zone I'm relaxed I'm chilled uh make sure that you've got your tech set up all good so it's super simple but you know you're jumping between teams and zoom and different ones so make sure mm. that it's all working before you jump in um and I think also making sure that you've researched the company, researched the person. I'm very big on listening to the earnings call or reading the annual report because then you can drop that into conversation. It looks like you've, <laughs> you know, really looked into the business and That's prepare your smart interview answers. So your mm. examples. So what was the situation? Um, so, so star, sorry. So what was the situation, task, action, and result? It should be smart too, yep. but yeah. Situation, <laughs> task, action action and result and the result should always be tangible or measurable ideally mm. and don't do some practice with people if you're nervous like yep. do like role plays with friends or family practice makes perfect as well um yep. and have some questions ready for the interviewer and the last one that i read is have a sheet where you've got your interview questions and then if you get asked something that really stumps you and then later you're like oh I should have said this then you can make write it down on that sheet because practice really does make perfect and it'll set you up for success for the next round yep <laughs> that was really quick fire um <laughs> tips there no I love those and th again that's going to be a whole nother episode I think uh because it's just there's so much detail on each one but I just wanted to emphasize that sheet that you mentioned at the end, because it provides so much comfort and confidence yes. in an interview. And you can say to them, especially if it's a walk-in interview, right? Um, or hold it up in front of you and say, Hey, I have a sheet with some pre-prepared prompts. Just, this is the sort of prep I make for my interviews. Uh, yes. it, pro it show, I, I want you to know that I'm prepped. Um, but also it just, you can say this provides me with a level of confidence so that, Hey, I'll, I'm, I'm not going to read off the paper, but it's just a prompt to like, Oh yeah, that incident. I'll talk about that. If they ask about when I showed, uh, you know, whatever. Yes. So <laughs> give working me a time. With a team. You... Yeah. Exactly. With leadership, sort of initiative, innovation. Initiative, that's what I was yeah. For. yeah. So that, that's one of my favorites. And then the other thing, um, that you mentioned that's so important is to have questions. I, yes. I really, not hate, I won't use the word hate, it's pretty strong, but when I've interviewed and people have not had questions for me, I've gone, are you not curious about anything? Like, really? <laughs> so I'm like, that. it actually kind of doesn't look great if you don't have any curiosity about anything. Uh, and there are some key questions you can ask, which we'll talk yes. about another time. Um, but the last thing, sorry, Em, I just wanted to say that you touched on when you're talking about having your responses with the STAR method. Um, Always use the talk, try and focus more on what you did 
yes. as opposed to we. Because a big mistake is to say, oh, we did this as a team. Yeah, but what was your contribution, right? Um, so prepare answers that have your contribution more than anything else. So Absolutely. And always focus on the action part. So you shouldn't mm. spend ages setting up like what was the situation? You know, we had a big meeting and the client was like that they like keep that to a minimum at the, ex you know, the exposition there um, yeah. and spend most of the time on, yeah, what you actually did, because that's what they care about. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, Em, that was that was a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that, that, was, that was heavy. There was a lot of dense content there. So everyone, you know, you might have to listen to this twice. Um, and uh, just to get all those notes down, please don't ask me to go through the, the episode and write these down in the show notes. Oh, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I probably end up having to do that in some some way, shape, or form. But um, Em, that was amazing. Thank you for sharing. And I know that we've talked about this stuff to no end previously. And I know there's so much more you can do. So we'd love to have you back one oh, of these days. You. Um, well, actually, let's see what the feedback's like. If the feedback's yeah. terrible, no, you're not coming back. No, but, yeah, um, I then yeah, my first and last <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so there you go everyone you gotta give me feedback on whether <laughs> we, we bring em back her Can you fate imagine? depends <laughs> my maiden podcast yeah yeah first and last but bucket list yeah. checked off yeah um, tick. <laughs> exactly all right so the before we wrap it up typical pie bites episode we talk about what we're reading so i'm assuming you're reading something um what do you got so at the moment I'm reading STFU. Um, the what does that find. stand for? <laughs> <laughs> the Power of Keeping Your Mouth Shut by Dan Lyons, um, yeah. and it's about how if you listen more than you talk, your blood pressure goes down. You're actually like a calmer person as well as a more successful person. And they mm -hmm. cite like Barack Obama and Angela Merkel as examples of people who say little but make a huge impact so yeah it's quite cool that's awesome i like that i i did look that up um i'm going to get a copy because i guarantee there are people going hey julian could use a copy of that oh i um, i definitely need it i'm still a work in progress that's why i got it like it's to try yeah. and make myself talk less and slow down so yeah yeah so and, and stfu stands for exactly what you think it does um here it is. I found it. I'm going to have to get myself a copy. Um, <laughs> cool. The, the last tip in the book is if you still have struggled with this, just put sticky tape over your mouth. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> but, um, okay. So actually I'll quickly share what I'm reading. Um, <laughs> I was trying to read a new book that I got. I can't even remember what it was, but my uh, eight year old wanted me to read the novel he's reading so he could talk Aww. with me about it to share comprehension uh, exercises and stuff. So I just finished reading Villain Academy. It's a difficult book. I tell you, no, it was, <laughs> it's a good book. Aww. It was terribly lame, but anyway, I read that for him and with him. And, um, the actual book I'm going through on Audible is, what is it actually called? Hang on. It's the Carl Sagan book. I can't believe I can't remember the name. Yeah. Cosmos, of course. By Carl Sagan, because uh, it's narrated by a bunch of people, but like Neil deGrasse Tyson and LeVar Burton and stuff. But um, for everyone, I don't know if you remember, I was reading A Brief History of Time through an audio book. I was listening to it and I got so bored. Stephen Hawking, you know, it's great content, but I was so bored. So I've just shelved that. Yeah. And now I'm listening to Cosmos much better. So I'm enjoying that. There you go. Um, beautiful. Well, M. Thank you so much for being here. Do you have any parting words? Actually, where can people find you? Because I can imagine everyone's going to want to connect with you after this. Oh. What's your, where are you at? So on LinkedIn, um, Emily Wilcock, definitely hit me up there, as, as you can imagine. Um, and through Pie Bites. Those are the main places. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't set that one up. Uh, no, I've got, I'll have the link to your um, LinkedIn profile in the show notes as well. So everyone can click on that and spam me and stuff. It'd be good. Um, yeah. Well, thanks everyone for listening. M thanks to you uh, again. I've said it a million times. Thank you for being oh. here and sharing such wonderful insight and uh, valuable information, especially for the people who, who need it the most right now. I really, really appreciate you being here. 
no worries. And if anyone wants to reach out, please do. Beautiful. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube and uh, we will be back next week. Cheers. Thanks, Jules. We hope you enjoyed this episode. To hear more from us, go to PyBite slash friends. That is pybit.es slash friends and receive a free gift just for being a friend of the show. And to join our thriving Slack community of Python programmers, go to pybytes slash community. That's pybit.es forward slash community. We hope to see you there and catch you in the next episode. Thank you.